Hey everyone, Shark here. Welcome back to the channel. Today I got a 1v1 for you on the map Road to Tunis between a couple of really high level players. Playing as Axis, we have Azilagath, uh, who in the game is uh, diagnosed with skill issue. He's coming from France. He's ranked number 33 with Wehrmacht, and he uses the mechanized battle group. And then playing as the Allies, we have Jeslin from Spain, ranked number 5 with the US forces, and he uses the armored battle group. Casting this one with me is my buddy Fred. He's an up-and-coming player who's really devoted himself to kind of learning the ins and outs of the games. Uh, he provides a lot of really quality insight throughout. I'm a big fan of this match because it shows the value of having a super clear plan from the start on Aziligath's part, juxtaposed against uh, trying to preserve some flexibility to adjust your opponent's plan, which Jeslin demonstrates really, really well. Uh, pretty awesome match. Uh, it goes pretty late and down to the wire. Uh, I hope you enjoy. And with that, we'll roll on to the video. Cool. So we've got Jeslin here on the north side of the map, playing as the Americans, uh, getting an engineer out with his scouts and a barracks immediately. And then on the south side of the map, we've got a Zilligath playing as diagnosed with skill issue. Uh, and he's got a second pio and is building his infantry company uh, right now. So, uh, you know, we've seen some games on this map. And uh, actually, a Zilligath is going for the mechanized battle group. Um, locking in immediately which I, I think is interesting there's not you know an advantage to locking it in right away other than taking away the temptation to go breakthrough uh which is normally um the other and fred i i mean the other Wehrmacht battle groups luftwaffe uh, uh breakthrough coastals there's an advantage to picking it early because you get a unit or an ability right kind of right off the bat um uh, but with yeah. with mechanized you don't immediately um, and I think he probably, if he's going to do that and lean into the eight rods, he's got to tech the left side of that command tree. And but, that's three points for the eight rods. Yeah. You need three command points, so. Yeah, to, and, and going right there. Um, Grenadiers abandoned the munitions point. Oh, it's because they got Pius coming up behind them. Smart. So they abandoned the the uh, munitions point and start grabbing the VP and are prepping for these scouts coming up. So two Grens out. For uh for Azilagath here. Um and then a second rifle coming out for Jeselin. He grabs the central garrison and then hops out to capture the munitions point. So pretty kind of passive uh start for both sides. No one's really pushing, they're just trying to shore up uh their fuel resources here. Yeah, using the garrisons to scout the other side. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think he's going to... A lot gonna... of sandbags from Mozilligat as well. Yeah, a lot of sandbags built early. No early MG though on the Wehrmacht side. Yeah, I've seen, I think, you know, if they can get it into the center uh, garrison, that MG can zone out quite a bit of the map. But this map does play pretty wide. And so, oh, here you go. Here's the MG. I think you need it, even with the Grenadiers being a little bit stronger than they used to be. I think you need it to manage the rifles, but you don't necessarily need it right away. The extra capping power from the Grenadiers is really helpful. Yeah, I think so as well. And if you have like, if you can't put it into the like the garrison, it's it's flanked pretty easy by the riflemen. Yeah, rifles push up a little bit on the center here. Grenadiers kind of fall back to the sandbags. They'll do a bunch of damage if the Rifleman try to approach. And now, as the rifles slide over to the center of the map, MG42 on their flank. Now, instant suppression on one rifle squad, and the Grenadiers move up to immediately take advantage. Jeselin already teching grenades, which I think is interesting. And the Zilligath going for a third Grenadier squad. Yeah, the, it's pretty interesting indeed. Probably for the garrisons. Yeah. Or for the for the MG when you flank it, but. Oh, good dodge of the grenade there. Grenadiers get back in the house. Don't drop a single model. MG42 comes up to support. Now rifles in the other major garrison. And actually, Oz is going to build up a veterancy with his tier one. So I think he's. It feels to me like he's really going to lean into that, and then probably the eight rods. Jeslin still hasn't picked a battle group or a commander. Oh, I heard this like yesterday watching a stream, mm -hmm. uh, where indeed um, doing the early uh, veterancy 
with the tier one just uh, mitigates a little of your early game, uh, weak early game as the Wehrmacht instead of like going early to tier three or tier two for like those units in there. So you can just hold out a little longer for like tier one. Yeah, good, uh, good grenade by Jeslin on the garrison to knock down a couple of the grenadiers. Pioneers come up with a flamethrower to eventually force away the engineers uh, in the center. Yeah, I, I, I think that works the most if you're going mechanized, right? Because you know you're going for a call-in infantry, or excuse me, call-in vehicles rather than needing to tech for them. Ooh, grenadiers eat a grenade on retreat. I think the retreat probably saved a couple of models there uh, because of the damage reduction. Yeah. And the Grens in this garrison standing on the rooftop. Uh, with the garrison versus heavy cover mechanic, it's just not the same as in Co. 2. So even getting in these little houses, uh, having a garrison makes a huge difference. So Zilli is going for the loop of company. Okay. That there is a lot of synergy with a, between the Luftwaffe company uh, and the mechanized group, uh, mechanized battle group. You get the vehicles, like vehicles that can repair. Um, which is a pretty cool ability. But I, I think you're right. I think he's just going to... He's trying to hold out for the eight rods. Which are usually a good counter to USF. Uh, especially the really rifle-heavy play. Jeslin getting a mortar out and then going ISC. Oh. Oz has to be careful of potential satchel here. Engineers... Yep, they flanked the MG. I feel like they were, they were thinking about throwing a satchel, but they're going to maintain the pressure on the 7042 here. MG42 finally retreats, so do the Grenadiers. We see a 221 coming out for Azilia. Yeah, and so raid package. Yeah, I, I think. I think the eight rods are part of the plan. And maybe the, the 221 brings the repairability as well as a light vehicle. I think uh, so as well. Yeah. So it gives him it gives him a decent anti uh, vehicle option with the Panzerbuchse in case Jeselin leans into you know USF light vehicles. Uh, Azilagath, really good map control now. He's grabbed Jeselin's fuel, is holding it with pioneers, and he's got this two two one coming up to support. Meanwhile, Jeselin counterattacking through the center of the map with engineers and riflemen. It was a good thing he saw like the mine being placed when he moved up with this 2 to 1. Mm -hmm. And like moved around uh, the center piece, and not through the mine. So I think I think that's a Wehrmacht mine, isn't it? Uh, no, I, I don't think so. I think the, the engineers placed it when he uh, advanced with the uh, 2 to 1 towards there. Okay. Yeah, it's a, it's a, uh, an uh, American mine. She's gonna hit it now. So. Oh, something just hit it. Yeah, the grenadiers just hit it. <laughs> oh, I see. I'm talking about a different mine on <laughs> the uh, the oh, Western you, VP. You, you, you. Okay. Yeah, and now the first eight rod hits the field. Jeselin, he's got a feel it. He's building the motor pool. Um, I think he knows he's being kind of out-pressured right now by a Zilligas play here. Mortar Zilligas takes away now. half a health. What's that? Yeah, Zilligas was now uh, taking the medical station. Yes. Space, yep. main base. And the AT gun build time, though, is still so long. Uh, Jeslin's got enough fuel... Especially by the time he has a manpower, he could get a Chaffee or a Greyhound. Oh, good oh, dodge. The 2-1 is, the is getting the Panzer Books enough. He's yeah. probably preparing for, like, Chaffees. Yeah, because he hasn't seen anything else, right? Um, he hasn't seen VARs. Man, Jeslin's sinking a lot of munitions into these grenades. Grenadiers almost go down to the rifle nade. The eight rod's there to cover, though. 
And did Jezelin do the uh, the munitions upgrade from the ISC? No, not yet. So he's paying full price for all these grenades. And he still has 130 munitions available to him. You see the munitions uh, most of the time get taken when you go for bars, right? Mm -hmm. Just before you go for the bars or just after so that uh, the extra bar is uh, cheaper. Oh, airburst brush coming in on NG42. Yeah. Oh man, it, the spread on that airburst is really good. 221 using the raid package to capture. So 221 a really efficient unit with the mechanized battle group. You can do a lot of things. They can capture, it can heal other vehicles. Uh, and then you get the Panzer Buchs on it, and now it's a decent light AT weapon. Jeselin's got his uh, his AT gun up here. And he's he's floating five command points. He still hasn't chosen the battle group. Mm -hmm. So that's why. So he probably is waiting for... Uh, I think he's waiting for more information on what to choose. Yeah, at this point, with five command points, going armored for the, you know, the war machine and some of the light vehicles might be helpful, plus you get the easy eight at the end. Um, he, I think he's too invested into infantry for airborne to make sense at this point. Oh, well, there he goes. Armored. Yeah, there's the armored. War machine, yeah, if you would, rapid production. <laughs> Rangers would be tricky because of all the light vehicles. So, the bleed, the manpower bleed is very severe then. Yeah, and there we go. The rapid production, Chaffee hits the field. And so now, Jeselin in a good spot to counter uh, the mechanized build here from Azilia. His rifleman has snares. Uh, he's got a Chaffee. Looks like it's hunting for this 8 rod. It's going to drive right past the MG42. Past the cutoff. But he swings through, doesn't find the vehicle he's looking for, and rotates out to the side. The 2 2 on the Panzer Buxa is hunting for the Chaffee. Jaegers are Shreks on him now as well. So Jeslin needs to be careful that he doesn't overcommit. Captain Mortarbrage coming in on MG42. Oh, that was a huge swing in pressure right there. Uh, the Chaffee just allowing Jeslin to be much more aggressive with his rifleman. And he's recaptured his fuel and is really starting to push all the way through to include capping the cutoff point here. And he's just upgrading BARs, so it looks like he's going to try to continue to rely on these riflemen to help him maintain pressure. Oh, a T gun hit on the uh, the two two one. He survived by thirty two health. That's <laughs> close. Grenadiers throw a grenade, but <laughs> riflemen sprint right past it to throw a grenade on MG42. That's a lot of damage. Yeah, but only one model, and he's got healing in base sector, so not a big deal there. Good counter capping here with the Jaegers. So Azilegith kind of weathers the storm, uh, and he's going to continue to put a lot of pressure across the map. I think Jesselin just lost the rifleman squad, right? He already had four, and now he's building I, the fourth one. Over. I thought he only had three, but he's building a fourth now. Could also be. I thought he already had four. We'll, uh, I'll go back and, and check the tape. I didn't see it. Panzer Company, tier four coming out for, uh, for Azilla Gath. For those of you who can hear my lovely dog in the background, I apologize. We have some people doing some moving nearby, so she's very concerned. Captain occupying the central garrison here and just absorbing a lot of damage. Rifleman going to push up through the center here. He has to, to move the bio with the flamethrower to clear the garrison. Yeah, but his MG42 is on retreat, and so these riflemen are going to be able to push right up past all of this. And it's one of those things with the AT gun and the Chaffee in the back, even the 8 rod has to back up against the rifles. Uh, it's just in too much danger of getting whittled away quickly. 
It's just he has so much more infantry and can push on all the fronts. It's pretty hard to keep keep up with that. Yeah, especially when you have someone uh, that's as good as as Jeslin is, uh, kind of managing them. He can maintain awareness kind of across the map. It looks like he did. Uh, Oz lost, or maybe he converted a Jaeger to a Grenadier. I was going to say, I don't remember him losing a Grenadier, but he definitely had three. And here we go. He's got an eight rod pushing out of base with Jaeger tracks in support. They'll be able to counter the Chaffee here. Chaffee gets a hit. The Shrek doesn't fire. Just out of range. Yeah, but it does push the Chaffee back. So the eight rod is going to continue to be able to bleed this rifle squad. Jaffe's going to come in for a second look. And you got to think maybe Jeslin's hoping he can draw this 8-rod into a mine. Grenadier eats a grenade on the opposite side of the map. First Shrek hits the Chaffee. 8-rod backs up. Those mortars doing work on the uh, MG. Yeah, that, that MG just retreated again. Man, I think good mortar play in this game is one of the secrets to like super high-level players. If you can keep your mortar harassing the enemy, you can do so much work. Sector's gone. We must take it back. Boy, oh boy, is Jerry pissed about it. We're engaged. Send the boss. Yeah, these grenadiers. Yeah, they get yeah. flanked by the rifles of BARs, but only he one. He saw it all the time. <laughs> yeah, he got he got him out, but yeah, that that pinch could have been bad. Now Stas has been coming out for a Zilla gap. Close it in. I think that's a good choice. Yeah, that's it's gonna help him manage just the the rifle presence across the map. But if you look at you know the big picture, Jeslin done a really good job. He's actually now he's pushing on his Illigat's fuel, so he's totally flipped the map control problem that he had earlier. And uh, the eight rod and Panzer Boost are just not doing enough damage, putting enough pressure on uh, to prevent Jeslin from gaining a lot of map control. Here's the MG42. These riflemen are going to be forced off. But they, they decap that munitions point. Enemy yeah. At least point. the 221 can uh, can cap points for him. And so can the 8 rod. Oh, Pioneers forced the captain out of the building here. So he pushed back pretty hard now, and that's some good capping on. Taking the, the points back. Mm -hmm. The map control. Yeah, and then the Stoss Trooper coming up through the center here. Rifleman sprint to close the distance. And here's a grenade. Dodge pretty easily. Uh, Panzerfaust hits the Chaffee up top. Stoss Trooper would probably win against the one rifle squad, but a second arrives and forces them away. And then rifles on the flank here, pushed back by the eight rod. The Grenadier squad occupies the central garrison. Think they know we're here. Now Zilligat's got a number of command points here as well. He's got a Panzer company, so I think he can just unlock the Panther production. He doesn't have to worry about the call-in. Although the price is the same, it doesn't really change. Unlike the Easy 8 where you get the benefit of the, uh, the reduced manpower cost if you opt for the build version. Jaeger's forced to retreat by a combination of rifles and a mortar. Yeah, so Azilla got pushing back, but I think Jeslin's done a good job of kind of shoring up his position here in the center, and he's floating quite a bit of fuel and manpower. There we go. There goes the uh, the assault package unlocked for the Stoss Troopin, which make them just significantly better, especially when they can use the camouflage bonus. Uh, and mechanized assault, so I think he plans on continuing to leverage these light vehicles, maybe with a Brumbear. He's also unlocked the Panther. A Brumbear could do really a lot of work in here. Yeah, especially with the mechanized assault, where you get the uh, all the bonuses that come with it. The reload speed, the aura buff to your infantry. Jaeger's force off, but across the board, Azilla got pushing through the center uh, and making good progress against Jezelin. 
Oh, stop trooping on the retreat path for the captain. And some grenadiers. They take almost no damage on the yeah. retreat path. Yeah, they took like none. <laughs> the riflemen, though. No. Yep, and there's the bear. Oh, 221 getting picked on by the chaffy. Oh. It pops some smoke. Good job. Oh, good. Nice. <laughs> and then crosses up through the smoke. <laughs> yeah, that was really nice. Gets that the panzer cops off. Yep. But there's nothing to follow up here. So the Chaffee will get snared and pushed back. And really, oh, here comes the, the Panzer Buxa. Oh, he has to be careful with the AT gun. Yeah, so he, he explores a little bit, but the Chaffee pulled back far enough, he doesn't get the shot off. There's the boom bar. <clears throat> mm hmm. I'm pretty interested to see how the map's gonna play now. Yeah. Because it's quite even now, maybe a little bit favored to Vasiliget, but like the Broombar can pretty much change that. Yeah. With only one with only one AT gun and, and a Chaffee. Yeah, now a couple of easy eights together will do a lot of work against the Brumbear. Oh the rifles forced off by a Sauce Troop and good use of the white phosphorus grenade. Or the is a red phosphorus for them. Doesn't matter. It still burns really hot, it hurts infantry. <laughs> <laughs> well, the, the tech depot is coming up for Jesselin now, and he's pretty close with uh, for an easy eight with uh, fuel. So yeah, by the I time that's gonna be long. By the time it's built, he'll be able to roll one out. It's 110 fuel. Yeah, and with the rapid the fast deploy, it's it's there pretty fast. So yeah. Panzerbuxa and Chaffee squaring off in the center. Jaeger treks in support. Chaffee thinks about moving up and actually might get punished here. If the Jaegers can get one more shot off, they won't. Chaffee will get away, and actually AT gun here doesn't see the Panzer Booster, so both vehicles get away again. Engineer is going to get forced away by the 8 gun. Yeah, both, for both vehicles is really close. Brumbear pushes the rifles away. Yeah, I think the Brumbear is the right choice. Um, he's obviously going to need a Panther at some point to deal with the easy 8s. But initially, getting that Brumbear out to deal with this infantry uh, and some of the team weapons. Although, I tell you what, Jeslin's done a great job of making this machine gun a non-factor. He's always throwing grenades, sprinting up, and forcing it to retreat, which keeps it off the field and makes it less, a lot less useful. Although, this rifle squad takes a lot of damage. If, if the A-Rod had followed up, he might have been able to knock down a couple of models there. There it is. Yep, first easy eight on the field. <laughs> and so far. Yeah. The fault deployed. Yeah. Where do you where do you think he's, and then a P4 coming out now for his guy, Which I actually like, right? And he hasn't seen the easy eight yet, but he needs the multi-role ability that the P4 provides. Brumbear shrugs off the shot from the AT gun. And from the first couple shots. <laughs> first shot from the easy eight. Oh, nice. white phosphorus round. round. Yeah, it's funny we're both. Look at the, the damage same. on the side hit from the uh, from the boom bar. It still does a yeah. lot of damage if yeah. you hit it like well. Yeah, if it penetrates, and it does some deflection yeah. damage as well. So Zilligath, uh actually Jeslin's going to get his a VP advantage here. So even though didn't get any decisive engagement between the Chaffee, the Easy 8 and AT gun. Oh, there we go. This 8 rod's done. Oh, nice smoke. This could be too fast. Oh, yeah, but this shot's going to kill it. Yep. So Chaffee pretty much traded for the... Uh, yeah, it's done. Just survived. <laughs> yeah. Chaffee Just survived traded for the 8 rod. Oh, the broom bar is showing its side armor. Yep. And here we go. Here's the Easy 8 pushing on it. Uh, Shrek hits the Easy 8. Easy 8's got to think about getting out of here. Oh, White Phosphorus oh, round again. Canceled, uh, he cancelled uh, the P4. Yeah, he cancelled it. Maybe he's holding out for the Panther now that he's, he sees the Easy 8 on the field. I think so as well. Easy 8's going to get away. Engineers retreat probably to make sure they can also repair it as soon as possible. Zilligath pushing back through the center. Brumbear is already more or less at full health. Oh, Captain oh. <laughs> retreats to the right side. <laughs> nice. No, good read. He really needs to just 
I think he just needs to demolish the building. <laughs> just use like the broom bear to demolish it because it's pretty annoying and he doesn't have a mortar or something. Well, he does have the flamethrower and the broom bar now to deal with it, but. But I think I think I still think you're right. It's just one less thing he has to deal with. Oh, these rifles are gonna clump up here. The Brum Bear is gonna back up though. I say if the Brum Bear hits them when you know, and they're gonna move away. Yeah, but it also hits your own unit. So it also cost them in a model for the grants. So that's why he kinda moved in with the grenadiers. So then it also has some friendly fire. And I love the awareness here though. Like Jeslin throwing a lot of grenades, but we've seen a lot of really good dodges from Azilla Gath. Very sharp, like he's on it and he's ready. Easy 8 rolling back out. I think Jezlin now very concerned with VP pressure, and Azilagath about to get the triple cap, so the Easy 8, even though it's not healed, uh, moving to the west side of the map, trying to, and we'll force off the Stoss Troop in. And here comes the Panzer Buxa. Why does this shoot? I thought it was in range. Uh, maybe just didn't have sight. There it is. Oh, I think it was waiting for that shot. Where's that coming from? Strong push here in the center from Jeslin. Airburst Barrage forces away the MG42. So yeah, phenomenal mortar play from Jeslin. That MG42 has really not been a factor. Oh, Ooh. there goes the rifle so close. Oh, but it, it's gonna get away here. Easy 8 challenged by the Grenadier, but it's fine. Another rifle squad gets away on very low health. Grenadier is pushing into the center, trying to maintain that VP pressure. At this point, if Azilagath gets a, a triple cap again, this game will be over in a matter of seconds. Okay, the Easy 8 is fully healed, healed now. Yeah, and he's just about got enough for a second. Which I think Azilagat sees coming, so he's got a panther coming out now. Yeah, I think so as well. He Grenade saved it up the Jaegers. for long. Get us out of here. Well, the good news is with the rapid production, literally as soon as he tells it to be built, it'll be on the field. Sauce Troop and fighting in the center, um, but forced back by the EZ-8. Brumbear in support, but no heavy AT for them until that panzer hits the field. MG42 manages to suppress the rifle squad. So Jeslin unable to complete the cap on the east side. And the Panzer books are doing a great job of pushing that easy 8 away. Second one on the field. Jaegers are going to force these engineers off. Yeah. And so Azilla got... Go ahead. Sorry. What were you saying? So both players... So both players... Didn't, uh, didn't have a lot of uh, tech upgrades. Mm -hmm. So, Jesslin, probably not because he he doesn't have like the, the right uh, infantry uh, support center. Because with the, like, the mechanized play with the armored battle group, he probably would have uh, had the uh, mechanized. Yeah. So, it oh. isn't really beneficial to spend your fuel for it. Man, so one easy 8 goes down. Really? Lucky but unlucky, so they wipe a squad of Jaegers, but the Grenadiers immediately pick up the Panzer Shrek. And between the Panther, the Panzer Faust, and the Panzer Shrek, one of the Easy 8s knocked out. And that's a big loss for Jeslin at this point. Uh, he really needs that mobile armor, two Easy 8s to counter the Panther and the Brumbear. Uh, and he's got the. Right now, he has two of the VPs. But at this point, if Azilagath gets any sort of VP advantage for an extended period of time, this game is over. Uh, easy 8 pushing on the Brum Bear, as well as some rifles. Panzer books are nearby to support. But they're going to back out, and I think it's because he wants his Panther to hit the flank. Stoss Troop and hold the East VP. Brumbearer does a lot of damage to the rifles. Now the Easy 8 forced on the east side of the map to deal with the Stoss Troopin and is a little bit out of position if Azilagath pushes in the center. And that triple that 2-2-1 with the Panzerbuxa. 
really effective. Jezelin using pour it on him, and then Rifle Squad takes a bunch of damage from the grenade, unable to dodge. Ooh. Mortar force back by the Brumble. Yeah, it's so hard. It can just take out the squads from a fight with just one shot. You have to retreat it if it doesn't land well. Yeah. Unlucky Bumber almost got engine crit uh, if the sticky bomb had gone off just a second later. It backs up. <laughs> Ooh, rifles annihilated in the center between the Pioneers, the Jaeger, and the Panther. I think this is Jeslin committing to the VP fight here. He's at risk of losing his second rifle squad here to the Jaegers. Oh, one more good shot. Rifle gets away. Easy 8 forces away the Jaegers. Azilla gets right there. Up on bottom. Yeah. They, yeah, they trade uh, trade flank BPs, but Aziligak gets set up here in the center. Brumber doing a ton of work to the rifles, and so Aziligak will hold with the center and the west VP, and then it has an MG42 to put pressure on the east side. He's moving it up now to capture, and Jeslin just doesn't have the field presence at this point. To counter this, there'll be a triple cap, and that's probably going to be it. Engineers, have been engineers re yeah, engineers repairing the EC8, but you know, lost the rifle squad, and now a second squad of Stoss troop and coming out for a silly gaff. And that's it. All right. So before we get into it with uh with Fred, I'm just going to go over the build order real quick, like we always do. So starting out with a Zilligath playing as Vermont mechanized battle group. Uh, he rolls with two pioneers at the start, uh, builds his infantry company right away, selects mechanized battle group. He's clearly got a plan in mind. It's two grenadiers and an MG42, a third grenadier squad. And then he texts the infantry officer quarters, which basically gives all of his tier one units uh, a veterancy boost. I really like this, right? He knew he was investing into that, uh, into tier one. So getting the veterancy upgrade actually helps him scale into the mid game and buys him some carryover time before he can start with the, the real mechanized play. From there, he goes to the Luftwaffe Company, which uh, is a really smart choice. Gets the 221 Scout car out, which he uses tremendously well once he gets the Panzer Buxa upgrade. Gets an 8 rod. And then I think here he recognizes that he doesn't really need to do the 8 rod pack, right, to hunt down these rifles. Jeslin's doing a great job using grenades. So he actually kind of techs out of the, the like light vehicle mechanized meta and into the late game vehicles. So from here, you see he techs the med station. Gets one squad of Jaegers, then takes one of his Grins and converts them to Jaegers as well. Uh, builds his Panzer company, and then he goes into his endgame units and really doesn't do a whole lot of building from there. So, Stoss Troopin, Brumbear, Panther, and then one Stoss Troopin right at the end of the match. He had this plan going in. I really like how he basically rolled the pressure from the early tier one start into mechanized light vehicles and then carried that through to late game units. Uh, really solid plan, executed really well, something that... I th feel like a lot of players can duplicate, at least in concept, if not in uh, like flawless execution like he did. And then uh, going into Jeselin, playing as the Americans, using the armored battle group, starts with a scout and an engineer, which I kind of like to see in 1v1s, you get a good mix of utility and capping power. Builds his barracks, gets three rifles out, and then immediately techs grenades and, and a med station. The med station is something that like, I've seen people delay getting because they're worried about the fuel investment, but it just helps tilt the engagements your way, especially against units like Grenadiers where they're high damage but low accuracy with the bolt action rifles. And when you're not dealing with the uh, with the MP40s, um, it can be kind of a gamble taking unhealed units out. So really smart that he texts that early. With the grenades in the med station though, he ends up only having three rifle squads for a long time. And I think he starts to kind of feel that getting into the mid-game, succumbing to pressure a little bit from Azilla Gas uh, Vermont build. Then he goes Infantry Support Center, which we're going to talk about here in a bit. Gets a mortar out, which is a good counter to uh, the MG42, and honestly, like he just uses brilliantly throughout the match. He builds his motor pool, gets an AT gun out, and then this is where he hasn't chosen a battle group yet. It makes sense uh, for him to, like, without any other choices, the others didn't really make sense for him. So he selects the armored battle group and uses his command points to get the discounted manpower on his vehicles and the rapid production. So he gets a chaffee out almost immediately. Then interestingly, he texts BARs, uh, I guess to help his infantry like hold up a little bit better against the veteran grenadiers. 
and the Jaegers. Gets a four squad of riflemen, which I think he really kind of needed the whole time to maintain pressure. And then at that point, he builds a tank depot, goes for a couple of easy eights. And I think had he not lost that, that second easy eight uh, with about a couple minutes left to go in the game, he might have been able to extend this one a little bit longer. But losing that engagement, losing that easy eight, he just didn't have enough on the field to kind of uh, be as mobile as he wanted to be and close this one out in his favor. So um, that's all I got here. I'm going to go grab Fred and then we will carry on with the conversation. All right, so I'm back with Fred here, uh, and we were talking a little bit kind of off camera. Uh, so the first thing is like, you got both these guys really, really good, uh, and you saw you know good, you know action, counteraction uh, in the build order, good reads from both players. Um, so the first thing though that we almost always do, the so Jeselin lost this one uh, on VPs despite really solid play, and so the first thing that we look at is like, all right, what does he do differently? And, and then Fred brought up this really good point about the timing of the support center selection for USF. So Fred, I'll kick it over to you to kind of talk through your thoughts there. So, well, when you play like the USF, you have like to pick your support center around four or five minutes. Mm -hmm. But most of the time, uh, you kind of want to choose later because in this game as well, Jesselyn kind of went for the inter infantry support center Mm -hmm. And I guess, I think in hindsight, he probably probably would have preferred the uh, mechanized support center mm -hmm. when seeing that uh, Ozilgut was playing the mechanized battle group yeah. and going for the light vehicles. But because of the, the hard lock on the support center, you have to pick it around four or five minutes. Uh, you, kinda, you can't go back and then you kind of also saw it with uh, i think the 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 tax because uh, in the end Jeslin didn't tag anything from his support center so mm -hmm. i i guess that's kind of yeah, it kind of says that he didn't like he wasn't uh, clear on that uh, choice in the end yeah uh, you know i think you know so back a couple patches ago when the air support center was was really viable that was a good pick if you weren't sure what your opponent was doing or where you wanted to go because it just gives you a bunch of really good support abilities right um the isc i think has just kind of become the default like if you're not sure what you want to do the isc is helpful because you get the captain uh and then you have these other upgrades that make your infantry more viable and reduce their manpower and bleed in this case though like, like you said, the way that Jeslin ended up trying to play, the only thing that would have been really helpful for him from this from this support center were the munitions surplus. Because he was throwing a lot of grenades, he ended up getting BARs on his rifles. Um, that that might have been helpful in saving some munitions, but it was also the only thing with the Armored Commander, that's the only thing he's sinking munis into anyway. Right? It's not like he has some big late game ability he needs to save them for. Um, I always kind of go back and forth with the using the mechanized support center with the armored battle group because you you don't need the 76 mil upgrade on the sherman because you have the easy eight so that's one that's kind of pointless but you get the vehicle survivability you get the free repair point you get uh the improvised munitions or the uh the refit of, the, of your vehicles so there's a lot of utility there and so i i agree with you like being forced to choose early can be probably a little frustrating because there's not enough information on the field uh, for you to make that choice uh, like we were talking about at the start of the cast, like the Wehrmacht, um, a lot of their battle groups, there's an advantage to choosing early uh, and just kind of committing to a play style. Uh, so it's it's kind of got to be frustrating for the U.S. player when Jeslin's trying to remain flexible and give himself options, but he's still forced to make really like a stylistic choice only a couple minutes into the match. Um, and there wasn't really anything like I. there's no other real indication. Um, that uh Azilagath has gone mechanized until you see the 221 capping a point. Like that's your first indicator that, like, oh, it's the mechanized battle group, right? So he has no way of kind of identifying that. Whereas the captain is a relatively big signature on the US side. Um, yeah, you can see it right away. Yeah. I mean, so obviously the the 30 fuel required for the support center is designed to pace the USF, right? So I mean, how do you how would you fix that? Is that is is there ability to potentially back tech and choose a different support command uh, support center? 
is it you can build tier three but it costs an extra 30 fuel until you build a support center like what's what in your opinion what's the answer there to mitigate that well that's kind of well, that's kind of interesting i don't know i i think being able to do it free is is the way i yeah otherwise you can build like with 30 fuel you, you you'll be way earlier with all your things yeah you will be way you'll be way earlier with your bars with your tier three mm-hmm. so yeah well i don't that's pretty it's a pretty hard choice i think yeah sorry that's not a that's not Balance like a super wise. easy question i just put you on the spot there. No, no. <laughs> it's a pretty it's pretty uh it's pretty interesting how you would like mitigate the the 30 fuel uh, lock for the bars and your tier three because balance wise the rule change a lot. Yeah, and and so like right now, you know, it feels like USF are like the last faction to be able to get AT guns out. But if you get rid of that support center requirement, then they're like the first to have them available because the motor pool is only 45 fuel, right? So it's much, yeah, same it's much for cheaper. like light vehicles. Yeah. Um, and then, yeah, I, I just wish the air support center was more viable. Like in my mind, it's just, it's too slow. The strafing runs get shot down too easily by some of the, the axis AA. It doesn't need to go back to when they first buffed it and became super oppressive where you just drive around the map, deleting everything with airplanes. But I think if that was a little bit more viable, then you'd see people, it give them some flexibility because they're like, I'm not sure which way I want to go. So I'm going to choose air support center for maybe some just like all around utility, uh, you know, effects on the enemy. And that'll give me the flexibility later that I need to, to choose a commander. Cause like we said, like he eventually got to the point where the airborne battle group doesn't give him a whole lot. Uh, cause he's already invested so much into light vehicles into rifles and going Rangers that late, you know, maybe it would help, uh, win some of those engagements, but the rifle with the BARs are already generally winning against the Grenadiers. Um, so now it's just an increased manpower investment when what he really needs is, is armored vehicles. So he basically got forced by the situation to the armored commander, uh, and then he had the you know less than ideal uh, kind of support center to support it. Um, yeah, I think so as well. Yeah, because yeah, when he waited pretty long for taking the battle group. Mm-hmm. Because you probably wanted to know what Ozilligut was playing, mm-hmm. and when you see the mechanized being picked, you probably want something like Armored, because yeah, when you know your opponent is going for the for the eight red, I don't think you want to go for Rangers. Yeah, because oh, so much RNG. <laughs> yeah, and you're gonna bleed so much manpower. Yeah, yeah. If you don't get a couple of bazookas in the first weapon drop, you're just gonna bleed and bleed and bleed. Um, other than that though right so we were talking about this the the match probably turned uh when there was that unfortunate engagement he has two easy eights they knock out the jaeger squad and then a grenadier squad throws in a panzer faust picks up the shrek and between the shrek and the panther knock out one of the easy eights that is probably the turning point for this whole game right there i mean losing the chaffee earlier uh not ideal but to counter the Brumbear, to counter the Panther, you need those easy eights in a team. You need to start getting some like critical mass, and uh, and only having one on the field is just not enough mobility and flexibility for for Jeselin. No, I think so as well because like there was only one AT gun on the map on the map, and mm-hmm. losing the second easy eight was pretty harsh. Like it was earlier in the match, he had like he went almost to Osilga's base with mm-hmm. his push, mm-hmm. and he had like almost the whole map. And then he was pushed back a little. It's, I think it was around the time the broom bar came out as well. Mm-hmm. And then, yeah, when the broom bar is on the field and you are, you have only like infantry and a chaffy, well, that's going to be hard. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Like uh, like one AT gun and a chaffy aren't going to do much against the broom bar. If you if you if it's supported by infantry or an MG or things, if it's if it's like isolated, then it's no problem. But yeah, well supported broom bar. It's gonna be so annoying. Lately, I've like become you need- uh, uh, just to your point. Lately, I've become a little bit skeptical of the chaffy, just because if you can't get it into a decisive engagement where you actually knock out one of your opponent's vehicles, um, I'd almost rather have the uh, the Hellcat. It's only twenty more fuel. I mean, obviously you have to to build the tier four, 
But if you're surviving yeah. this long with rifles and an AT gun, the extra penetration, the extra range from the Hellcat does a lot more to threaten the Brumbear. Like the Chaffee can't go toe to toe with the Brumbear. It'd actually probably lose even with the deflection damage on the on the Brumbear rather than the penetration. So <laughs> yeah, well, probably if you if you can like speed around it constantly, if mm -hmm. it's like a one v one, you probably win. And you just keep getting behind it. Yeah, but well. The Chaffee was, of course, for the 8-Rat and for the 2-to-1, two -two but when the Jaegers come out with the, with the Faust, I think one Faust probably does almost half of its damage, maybe a little yeah. less. Yeah. So like two or three shots will just uh, cool. annihilate the... And Azilagath, he had the Grenadiers all over the map, right? He had the 2-to-1 two -two with the Panzerbuchse. Uh, so he had a lot of built-in counters, and part of it is probably just, obviously, Jeslin doesn't get to see the whole map like we do. And I don't think that building a Chaffee is a mistake. I, I'm just starting to think that, like, lately in some of the games where I've, I've seen it, it comes out late enough that its, it's window to really be, like, effective is diminished. And then it ends up being kind of this unit that, like, you roam around the map, but it's worthless against infantry. Uh, it can't capture points for you. All you can do is really hope that you get in a decent flank with it, and then it gets hit by a mine, it gets Panzerfausted, and then then it's gone. Yeah. And it's a fifty fuel investment that that didn't pan out for you. Yeah, that's pretty hard. It's it's a pretty all in unit. Mm -hmm. Like yeah, it's it's pretty all in because it can't do much against infantry, and it's pure uh, AT. So yeah. that's kind of hard. And indeed, if you have like uh, Faust running around everywhere, or like the <laughs> Getting well maneuvering in there is pretty hard with the Jeffy, even though it's pretty fast. Yeah, especially against really like really talented players, right? That know how to micro and keep yes. their units spread out. Then it gets it gets really challenging. Uh, yeah, so well. Real quick before we move on to Oz, a couple of things I want to call out from from Jeslin. So first off, mortar play was just outstanding uh, between the mortar and the rifles. The he kept the MG42 from doing really anything productive for most of the match. Um, so yeah. that's something that like when someone really knows how to use a mortar, it's it is infuriating to play against. And that's what it felt like just watching. Like that thing was constantly whittling down Gren squads, pushing away the MG, um, just doing a lot of work. At one point it knocked half of the health off of the 2212. Um, so big props to Jeslin on his mortar play. Um, I also really liked the the play with the captain. Uh, did a really good job of keeping it up front using the mortar barrage and some of its abilities to kind of uh, help him turn some engagements um, and then for both players really enjoyed seeing the grenade dodge kind of play and counterplay there um, as each yeah. one of them is trying to read what the other guy's going to do uh, you know fake grenade throws grenade throws into the building or near the building at the exit point using the other exit like just really clever all the way around you can see both players trying to figure out what the other guy's going to do so um, I thought that yeah. was that was really solid. Uh, yeah, just just the uh, amount of events happening at one point in the match mm -hmm. because like there were like battles on all fronts constantly, so that was a lot uh, nice to watch as well. So it was pretty hard to keep up with yeah. like, <laughs> with all the nades and the engagement. Yeah, it's it's tough enough just casting, keeping the camera on the action, you know, and then you hear grenades, you hear sound cues from across the map, and. And obviously the players are already there and already maneuvering. Um, so they were just kind of all over the place doing a really good job. Uh, for Azilagath, I, I think he, he did it exactly right. Right, He developed a lot of pressure early, which is difficult to do playing Vermont against USF, um, countering kind of the rifle pushes. A lot of early pressure. Steamrolled that, used uh, some of the abilities with his battle group to kind of maintain the pressures through the mid game and mitigate the power of the USF like motor pool. Uh, and then he just made good choices and really like refused to make mistakes in the late game uh, and closed it out. I don't have like to me that is a a great way to execute the mechanized battle group from Wehrmacht. Like yeah. pretty solid. Yeah, I think so as well. Like the Luftwaffe company was really nice as well because the Jaegers with the 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 Shreks were like really good mm -hmm. against the uh, the potential Chaffee mm -hmm. because yeah, well the Chaffee couldn't do much, and after that the Easy Eight also got chunked by it so that was really good he had like at one moment he struggled a bit when he was pushed and he just lacked the infantry against all the rifle squads mm -hmm. and like the captain and the scout squad so and then you then the broom bar came 
and that kind of relieved the pressure a bit. Just around that time, we, the I think it was like 50 uh, 50 the map control, mm -hmm. and then the broom bar came, and I think from that point it kind of. Well, I, I think from that point, obviously, obviously the game could swing anyway. Yeah. But well, the broom bar just did so much damage. Mm -hmm. Also killed like 28 squads and a friendly. So uh, <laughs> squads, <laughs> infantry, 28 yeah, yeah, infantry. Yeah. So. Yeah. Well, just being able to keep it there in the center and manage the center VP and kind of blunt all of the pushes that Jeslin had because uh, the flanks. The Stoss Trooper are going to beat rifles on the flank. The Easy Eights can't be everywhere. Once you get the Panther on the field, the pan using the Panzer books to kind of counter it, like lots of really good play. Um, yeah, really impressed with the two two one. I've seen it used before, but never quite to that level of effectiveness. So, uh, yeah, yeah, really it's impressed. It's really annoying if you every time <laughs> you push your if you every time you push your Easy Eight and you get like the the fourth round in your face. It's really annoying. Yeah. Oh yeah. Um. <laughs> But, but yeah, waiting, like, he floated a lot of fuel, but mm -hmm. he didn't, like, he even cancelled the, the P4. I'm pretty interested why he cancelled that, probably because he wanted to go for the Panther. Yeah, oh, well, I guarantee that, you, I, I, you know, he saw that first EZ8 hit the field, and he's like, yeah, actually, P4 is not going to cut it. I need the Panther. Yeah, um, I think so as well. Yeah, P4 would have been good without the EZ8 there. Um, but the Panther also helps him like in, if it's not an easy eight, if it's a Hellcat, right? Or a couple of Hellcats, a Panther will help you fend them off better than a P4 will because they'll just chunk down a P4 so fast. Um, and he had this between the Brumbear and the Stastrupin, he had enough anti-infantry to, to make it into the late game there. Yeah. And he, he even built like another Stastrupin right at the end. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That, which which oh. could be a broom bar or something else, but like just having the infantry to like capture and he didn't need an extra tank or armored unit yeah so i guess that was really well played yeah even even at vet zero the stars troop and scale really well against the rifles um especially when you use them well and you keep them at range so uh, yeah really well well played uh by both guys um you fred do you have anything else uh for these guys before we get out of here the only thing I'm I'm kind of interested in is like uh, why Oziliget didn't tag like the, the, his final building, like his tier four uh, star. I don't know what it's called at the moment, but I'm kind of interested why uh, he, he didn't tag that. Oh, the veterancy. The yeah, mm. the veterancy one with the broom bar and like the, the panther. That's interesting. I you know, I'll see if I I'll see if I can ask him. Um, or the, yeah, with the Stoss Troop and like he went for the Stoss Troop and I like it was, it was interesting. And I would like, I'm kind of interested in the end. And probably it was the first point we like made is like uh, why the why he uh, Jesselin didn't tag the the munitions because mm -hmm. uh, even for like the the Airburst Barrage got like 25 uh, muni. And like the AT gun has like the ability to uh, the armor penetration ability costs like fifty muni as well, mm -hmm. and just lots of nades and yeah. things like mines and things. So I'm really interested in that as well. Just uh, the I'm just kind of interested when you uh, when do you tag and when do uh, when don't you tag? Yeah, and kind of my so I mean so I have a guess, and if I can if I can get. Azilia have to give me some uh, some perspective on it. I'll, I'll come back and add something to this. But uh, in these games, when you're playing across the map against someone who's also really good and really high like actions per minute, you spend a lot of time in the tack map and in your various engagements trying to make sure that you don't lose anything like sloppily. So that's why I think you see them kind of tech in bursts. Right? Think about when Jezelyn chose armored. Right? It was no choice, yeah. no choice, no choice. And then he just picks the entire left side of the tree. Yeah, and so yeah, I, that's true. And and so that's what it feels like to me is he's he's not thinking about teching. He's thinking about winning the engagement and what unit he needs next to build his composition. And so when he finally like opens the battle group menu or he finally opens the training center, he's just going to get whatever he needs and then move on to the next thing. Um, and you actually kind of saw the same thing from Azilagath. Like uh, he knew he needed the eight rod, but after that he built up a bunch of command points before he went back in and, and chose what he needed. 
and I, I, the right side. <laughs> yeah, and <laughs> I think it's, it's just it's the the pace of the game prevents you from spending a bunch of time sitting back and thinking about it. Whereas we're watching, and we're like, why hasn't he picked this yet? Oh man, yeah. I can't believe he doesn't have the APM to micro five engagements and choose his <laughs> command points. You know, so that that would be my <laughs> guess. Makes sense. I'll, uh, yeah, I think so as well. I'll I'll ask him. You know, and then see what he comes back with. Sure. Cool. Well, Fred, uh, thanks for casting this one with me. This is a lot of fun. Yeah, thanks for having me. Yeah, of it's course. It's been a while. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's what happens when everyone everyone has a job and a life, right? But yeah, um, and and like six hour difference. Yeah, time difference, no big deal. Just stay up later, okay? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, sure. I'll try. I try to manage that. All right. I appreciate it, dude. Uh, that's all for us, guys, and uh, we'll see you all in the next one.